with actual fuck. Big date. This is my first time going on a date since I started presenting. Hi. Hey. She had a date with a chaser. She had no right rejecting you like that. They should know their place. What is it, another all right circle jerk? Every skinhead and incel in town is running around with a tiny little heart on. Chris! Who were they? What the fuck did they want? I don't know, they followed me! Dead men don't rape! Dead men don't rape! How many of mother? There's definitely more than us. No harm in cracking some fascist skulls to see what's inside. Women are, women are, women are dying. Yo, this is my body. My body is mine. Don't belong to the government. I rape is on the wrong feet. Never fuck with queer filmmakers. Uh, welcome to the station of Decapitation Without Your Head. I'm Nasty Neil, and I'm joined by Alice Mayo McKay, co-writer and director of T-Blockers, coming out March 5th, which is today or tomorrow, depending on when you're listening to this. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Uh, for people not aware yet, can you give them an idea of what T-Blockers is about? Yeah, so it's um kind of a no budget trans horror film mixed with I don't know like a hangout coming of age film about parasitic alien men and these like queer people fighting bigots and just navigating life. Yeah, yeah. Well, well that that same old movie. No, but uh, was there a a particular inspiration for the film? Um, I mean, I was inspired by a couple of different filmmakers and I, especially the part with the narrator and the cryptessa that was kind of, I don't know, taken from like Bella Lugosi and Glenn of Thunder by Edward. Um, and then the other kind of parts were just like inspired by, you know, Gregoraki's like um, Doom Generation and kind of that colorful kind of queer, you know, storytelling mixed with like genre elements and um, Kevin Smith's Small Rats a little bit, you know, with like the hangout kind of stuff and friendship. Yeah, just a couple of different films and things right now. I'm glad you said actually Ed Wood because I wrote that in my notes when I was watching. I was like, it gave it a very Ed Wood feel, uh, the narration. And um, uh, who played that part? And, uh, you know, wh uh, how did you find like the perfect person to play that role? Um, so that was et cetera, et cetera. And she was in Drag Race, um, the Australian version. Um, so I worked with her a little bit before and like we would hang out occasionally when I was in Sydney. Um, and then, yeah, I just thought she was great because not only she's like a drag queen who's like done, you know, the RuPaul television circuit, but she'd also gone to film school herself and, you know, was a big, you know, horror and film fan. So she had all those references and she like understood like where I was coming from as a filmmaker as well. So that was great. Uh, and Edward himself, you know, even in the Edward movie, it's always been like played off as comedy that he wore, you know, uh, women's underwear and stuff. But, you know, really a person way ahead of his time as far as, you know, uh, just a, a social person so uh, uh edwin himself like is he an inspiration for you yeah definitely i mean i think it's quite a you know beautiful story despite you know how his life kind of ended and took a turn but you know i think being more back in that kind of generation and you know making glenn Zander, just that film alone compared to you know his other like novels and all of his films and stuff just that film alone i think is such a big part of like culture and yeah i think that's crazy inspirational you know, there's um early on in your film uh, when the characters are talking about uh, like trans filmmakers from before. And there's this kind of line like, oh, yeah, and they killed themselves like back in the 90s. Um, do you have any like uh, a mentor or anyone who's the, that you've talked to personally or anything um, about being a, a gay filmmaker, a trans filmmaker? Um, yeah, I mean, I think. I don't know, I'm kind of, a lot of the collaborators I work with, I'm really lucky, you know, Vera Drew, who's doing People's Joker, she's now editing my next film, but, um, you know, she's someone who's been in the industry a lot longer than I have, I've, and, yeah, I look up to her, and there's Louise Weird, who's, like, an independent filmmaker in Canada as well, all these different trans women who I'm able to connect with, you know, thanks to social media and stuff, so, 
something quite great. I'm fortunate in that regard. Now, the movie itself, like a big theme, is like fighting back against trolls in a way. Um, how about yourself dealing with? Because uh, I'll be honest, as soon as I posted you're coming to the show, I posted the trailer. Most people are excited, but I did get uh, some people on YouTube, you know, saying negative things. How do you yourself like deal with that? Um, I mean, I don't really think there's, you know, a way to deal with that. I think, you know, I guess it kind of comes in circles. I mean, you can try and ignore it, but I think especially there's like uh, an intensity to it that I think is, you know, always going to affect you a little bit. So I just, you know, try to stay off, you know, on the internet as much as I can. And, you know, I'm thankful I got to like travel with this film at festivals, like Outfest and stuff like that, which, you know, a lot of the audiences were trans and clear and they were able to talk to me in person which I quite liked a lot more than, you know, this online kind of reaction and stuff. Yeah. That's probably good advice for everyone. Stay off, stay off the internet for a lot, but, uh, and go to festivals. I'm a big fan of festivals and I know you played at uh Salem uh, film fest. I'm in Massachusetts. Um, you know, a lot of your films have played there. What is that film itself? How important is that to you? Um, yeah, I mean, I love playing festivals and I love Salem so much. And I think that was a really beautiful place to kind of premiere the film, you know, having it, with a trans, you know, woman who's like running the festival and also being so Salem is so like wildly queer friendly and trans friendly. So I just think that reception was great. You know, it was like a sold out screening and yeah, it's just really special. Uh do you get to go to a lot of the the um the festivals, you know, outside of Australia? Um so T Luck is just the first one that I was able to like to travel um with festivals, um, which I was really lucky for and I'm hoping to do so, you know, with my next ones as well. But yeah. Uh, do people uh, like the audience? Do they take to the movie differently depending, like, what country you're in, or what country it plays? Um, I mean, I think America has been like the most like vocal and like I don't know, like when you're in the room watching with them, I think there's more like uh, like a like a visceral reaction as opposed. to, I think Australian audiences are very like, especially Australian festival audiences, a little bit like tamer, as in like they just kind of sit there, like they like the film, but it's not like you know in America, it's just kind of like let loose, especially like the horror conventions. They're like you know make noises and like i don't know it's just like more of a fun vibe yeah. for me as well well i would think well first of all like i think horror and comedy are the best movies anyway to watch with an audience but uh t blockers i think would be a, a cool uh audience experience because there's a lot of great visuals and there's violence and you know there, there's a lot of stuff going on yeah uh, I, can you talk about the look of the movie because i love you know it's got you got the big bright greens and purples and then that really contrasts with like the the sludge like the black sludge which is what kind of represents the the bigotry and evil in the movie yeah so i kind of wanted to use color as a character so that was kind of like from the get-go um i mean when the characters are in their bedrooms and like at the queer clubs that's like a very like safe space for them and like it's a very like by lighting you know colorful kind of safe space for them and then it's like the date and her you know her cinema work life is this more like a, a neutral kind of like washed out kind of look and then as you mentioned, like when you get to like the bigots and stuff like that, it's this green and this darker colors that kind of brings out like the sleaziness of the situation. And yeah. And you, when you mentioned right away, he says like a no budget movie, but I think like stuff like that really adds to the production value, like the bright colors. And I also, I, I'm, I like that you have a lot of squishy noises and the violence and the biting. I always think that adds to, uh, to the gore in a movie. Thank you. Yeah. And I, that's a weird question, but how, do you have like, uh, do you just go and like, does someone already have like these squishy sounds or do you film squishy sounds? Like how, how do you come about those? I mean, I think some of the squishy sounds are just like from filming and like that. There's like interacting with like this gross slimy substances. <laughs> and then I think the sound design, I also just recorded some stuff as yeah. well. For anyone listening, I think that's a good idea for a documentary, documentary in itself. Someone can make a documentary about sound effects and, showing people uh, how they get squishy sounds and, and things like that. Uh, can you talk about um, uh, your creative partner, uh, Benjamin Robinson, who you uh, co-write a lot with? Yeah, I mean, I've written pretty much everything I've ever done with him that I made um, for like a long time. I think we connected when I was like 14 and then it's, I'm 19 now, so it's like five years of, you know, working relationship. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we just, we have a really nice back and forth. We both have a lot of you know, same references, but also different, you know, him being older and, you know, having different life experiences and different films and all this different stuff that he's gone through. And then I think also me being younger, I think it's just like a nice collaboration, the two of us. And yeah, we work really well together. 
And uh, Lauren Last, uh, who plays the lead, Sophie, I see that's her first IMDb credit anywhere. Anyway, um, how did you cast her and what made her perfect for the role? Um, yeah, so I didn't really know who to cast as a lead. And then she was living um, in Sydney, so like interstate at the time. Um, and we had some mutual friends. And then she just sent in a self tape. And then, um, yeah, I was just like, that's kind of perfect for the role. And I asked, she also went to film school as well, which kind of made, you know, some of the film stuff really cool. And yeah, I just thought she was great. Uh, what's it like for you to direct uh, like uh, some of the action scenes and you know in uh, fighting scenes? Um, yeah, I mean it's pretty tough. I think it's like my least favorite part, especially you know like when all like the men in the warehouse and stuff. There's like so many men, so many extras, um, so much to do. Um, especially like when you're working on an intense schedule. Um, I was really lucky. Like a lot of the those guys is like taking like stunt training courses and were able to kind of you know do their own kind of choreography as well so it's kind of another collaboration which yeah it was good to have so uh, you said you started uh direct uh like getting the movies when you're 14 um when you're 14 and like you tell your parents like i want to start making movies wh wh what do they think of that um they're actually really supportive um you know i i went to a music school so i was kind of already you know in like that artistic you know kind of area um and i'd always like wanted to write stuff so yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it was a surprise. I mean, them like being like in the university and like research field was like kind of, you know, I'm very different from that. But yeah, they've been great. And uh, what was that experience like you for, for you, though? Like, what, what do you do? I know you're in school to music school, but you're 14. And, like, I'm going to make a feature film. Like, um, do you like do you just like Google? I, I don't know. Look on YouTube, like how to make a movie. Like, how, how does how do you even get involved? Um, I just honestly, I messaged like uh, a local production company um, for some work experience and then just kind of went from there. They were lucky enough to say yes. So I, I got to sit in on like the offices while they made like this quite high budget like television show and I got to watch that process. And then that's where I met like my DOP now. And then from then on, Adelaide was like really small. So I was just able to keep getting onto like these sets. And then, yeah, that was just like the best learning experience I could have had. I mean, a lot of my friends have similar experience, uh, you know, saying like, yeah, uh, working on a trauma movie or something and watching, you know, people do it is a uh, is better than maybe spending a fortune and going to film school. Not that I want to talk to anyone out of going to film school or anything. Uh, how about filming the movie within the movie? Because you do a good job making that look like a uh, like an actual no budget movie that they're watching. You know, you want to yeah, keep so it completely different from the rest of the movie. Yeah, aesthetically, we actually shot that like on VHS tape. So like the DOP's friend does that kind of stuff a lot. Um, so we just did that in like a park one afternoon. And then, yeah, it was a really cool experience, like shooting on actual tape as well, because I've never done that before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how much of that other movie did you film? Like pretty much just what we see in the movie or is there more stuff? I mean, I'm probably like, I'm sure we like shot more stuff, but it was probably just what you see in the movie is pretty much the best of what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you put physical releases out of uh, of your films? Would there ever be like a physical release for T blockers? Yeah, I, I can't say too much at the moment, but there is one this year. So stay tuned. All right. All right. Well, where would people like go to follow the the movie or yourself to see in the future, like a possible uh, that we yeah, can't I mean, talk I'm on, about? Um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram. It's just like Alice Mary McKay, and then Dark Star Pictures is distributing the film in the US. They'll post about it. And then Umbrella Pictures in Australia is distributing here. Yeah, they've got a physical release coming out March 20th, which I can talk about. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And they stay off the internet, but go and follow those pages. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, what are you working on currently? I know we're here to talk about T blockers, but are you working on something currently? Yeah, I have a film currently doing some festivals, which I premiered at South by Australia last year, which is kind of like a musical drive, like road trip demon killing film which is really fun and then yeah just some other projects as well uh when you said like um the action scenes were like i don't know if they're your least favorite or your hardest stuff to film um when you're putting putting a movie together like what are the things that interest you so what what would be your favorite parts uh, of making um, film i mean i really like shooting the like intimate kind of dialogue parts you know like the bedroom stuff was probably my favorite to um because I think that's kind of like the heart of the story and 
you know, just like the building blocks for the rest of everything. And just, yeah, I think those are really beautiful moments. I really like working with actors in those kind of small spaces. And yeah. And uh, how about finding the music for for the movie? Because you have like perfect, uh, some great music choices in the film. Uh, you know, the, the one that you use in the trailer is also, you know, at the, the closing uh, credits. And were, were these things music like that you knew of already? Or like, how did they come, you know, to be part of the movie? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'd listened to the artists. We use like a song, Tropics and Dead Men Don't Rape, um, which is one of the trailers as well. I just listened to her music. I think I found her on TikTok during COVID. And she's quite big, I think, now. Um, I just reached out to her on Instagram. And then like one of the montage songs is also just like one of my favorite Australian musicians, June Jones. And then, yeah, this would just be what I could listen to. And then I didn't think they'd say yes, but they just did. So I was really lucky on that front. Yeah, I mean, that, that's good advice. So the worst someone's going to say is no, so you might as well ask him. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't hurt you if they say no. So, uh, T-Blockers coming out March 5th. Uh, really fun movie. Also, oh, it's got both best of both things. It's got a lot of social commentary, but it's also a movie that you can just watch and enjoy. Yeah. See some cool colors and, and squishy sounds, which I'm all about. All right. Well, thanks for doing this. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll talk to you again. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Neil.